part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster. Um, We are back. This is your Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast where we both hear experts and newbies talk about the MCU. And our goal for this podcast is to always watch the movies you should be watching in order to get ready for the next MCU movie, which, of course, coming up is going to be Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Madness, I say. So to help us uh, get prepared for that, we have uh, watched uh, a lovely film. Today's film we're going to be talking about is Spider-Man No Way Home. Have you heard of it? It was the biggest movie since the pandemic happened. People actually risk their lives to see this movie. <laughs> we all did. Um, and I am joined by two wonderful, uh, can I call you co-hosts? No, you're guests. You're not staying. Uh, two wonderful guests. Um, <laughs> uh, we we have... upgraded to the view situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First it was like, we were like, you know, I mean, no, no, they, they don't know who we are. We're just mysterious voices here. Yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I, and well, let, let's end the mystery. Um, in our expert chair today, we are joined by a comedic legend um, taking Chicago and L.A. and who knows where else by storm. It's the wonderfully talented and my better friend than a year ago, Steve Hahn, everybody. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Steve, how are you? I'm so good. And the next city I'm going to be taking by storm is Reykjavik. I'm going to take the improv scene, improv scene to Iceland. Uh, IO stands for Iceland Olympic. <laughs> for me, follow me. I I cannot stand that you said that, um, Steve. Uh, you so in the Google form that I sent out, uh, mm-hmm. you checked expert. What makes you a Marvel Cinematic Universe expert? You know, so I I'm like a more recent expert. I I. I've always gone to the Marvel movies, but I never went to like the midnight premieres or anything like, you know, like I always went to them and I knew them, but I didn't do anything with them. And then during the pandemic, I watched all of them probably four, five times each. Like I I just like sat down and watched all of them (laughs) over and over. And then I just like got hooked. And so I've watched all of them a bunch. I lit, I have a Disney land annual pass. So I go to um, the Marvel campus here all the time. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I just, I love all things. I love, I, you know, I think, uh, well, I'm sure we'll get into this, but I think people give superhero films like a certain, like they, they push it into a certain genre, but I think Marvel movies kind of like, they do more, they critique more, they do more than just I mean, I don't think there's any superhero that's like just a superhero movie, but they do more like to to transcend that genre, you know. I really oh, love yeah. them. Hundred percent. Um, love that you go to the Marvel campus. I, I should say for a warning, this is a very LA based uh, <laughs> podcast episode, so, um, so we may slip into some industry talk. You know, I don't know. I'm gonna carry us in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> I was. <laughs> oh, okay. hey, what side are you? Mysterious voice. <laughs> Serious voice. Um, Tell us your sign first. I'm a Sagittarius <gasps> and I'm a Cancer rising and then another Sagittarius. Is it m- Moon? Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a Pisces this is already. Moon and a Sag- I'm a Sag rising though. People think I'm a Sag. <laughs> hey, this is already so California. Uh, this- <laughs> hey, it's the center <laughs> of the universe. If you're listening and you don't know how we talk, then I don't. <laughs> to my then future students in Reykjavik, you get- <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> this is what I'm bringing. This is the culture I'm bringing. <laughs> this is what I'm bringing. All right. Well, we're bringing, uh, oh, because what's unique about this podcast, it's not just a bunch of experts talking about how much they love MCU. We also want to hear people who don't care about Marvel or who wouldn't call themselves experts. So in our newbie seat, we have the wonderfully talented, also uh, Chicago, LA, taking the world by storm, Liz Fitzgerald. Hello. Hi, I'm so happy to be here and I'm confused and I'm excited. <laughs> I wouldn't want it any other way. Liz, <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm so good. Um, I saw a possum outside my apartment last night and it took me like hours to go to sleep after that. Um, Wait, was it was it playing dead or was it like no, actively it, on the move? It crawled up my stairs to where my apartment is. It was able to crawl upstairs. Oh, oh you but, thought like in the, like, do you live in one of those LA apartments where your door opens to the outside? Yes. 
Oh, but there's okay. like five very, steps very from the very, very high. Reykjavik, <laughs> yeah. listen up. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Reykjavik, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't have this, but in LA, <laughs> sometimes don't. apartments doors yeah. open right into I, the it's very LA yeah yeah I gotta be the person to say that actually Iceland is more green and Greenland is more icy mighty ducks <laughs> mighty ducks they mighty ducks did lie to us but uh okay possums aside Liz Sorry, yes. you <laughs> you check that you were a newbie to the yeah. MCU what 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 makes you a newbie I don't know anything about it um mm. I don't know what's happening well, that, I don't know what's true. going on um, but I'm, I'm like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. I was, I was not interested. And then I watched WandaVision and then I was like, okay, maybe I'm interested, which I know is not what we're talking about today. I know that I'm learning like, uh, soon. Um, yeah, man, WandaVision really did a lot of work to convert a lot of people. Um, but we'll, but you're right. It's not the WandaVision episode. We will get to that later. Um, Okay, we've got possums and we've got uh, zodiac signs all raring to go. So, y'all, let's dig in with my expert newbie to this Spider-Man No Way Home, which I don't even know where to begin with this. I feel like I'll start. That's where I'll begin. I'll begin with me. I love (laughs) I love this movie, Um, but it almost doesn't even feel like a Marvel movie. This feels like a love letter to Spider-Man. Like this is whoever your Spider-Man is like, you know, whoever your favorite Spider-Man, <laughs> they're probably in this movie. Um, it's just such a wonderful send up to like three different franchises all at once. And I, I still can't believe they got away with it. Um, let's go to uh, Steve. Let's go to our expert, Steve. W- w- what did you think of Spider-Man? No way home. Uh, I mean, same. I, it felt like it was, um, it was like, 20 plus years of payoff like it was like 20 plus years of setup for this like one movie to do do it it felt like bigger than um end game in that way you know where it was like all this yeah. payoff um which felt awesome and it was um I don't know. Like I, I, I've been saying for a long time that I would pay good money to experience the collective effervescence that I felt from Endgame again, and I did not go. So I, when I watch my Marvel movies here in LA, I go to the Chinese theater on Hollywood for mm-hmm. my for the midnight premieres. It's, but an L- it's, an L- it's an LA theater. It's an LA. Theater. It's on Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard. <laughs> you've heard of it. And um, for those Marvel Marvel heads out there, it's um, in Iron Man 3. It's where Happy got uh, like blown up. <laughs> that's um, true. Wow, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, true. Right, it's right. It's at the Chinese theater. Um, but uh, I, I like... I didn't go to a big enough theater to experience it. So I'm, I feel kind of bummed that I missed out on it, but it was kind of similar, but like the collective effervescence that Marvel movies somehow bring, it's like the only, I guess the only other movie I'd, I'd experienced was like Harry Potter. Maybe that was like the same type of thing, but like you can mm-hmm. hoot and holler in a Marvel <laughs> Marvel movie and like, ex, like experience it, you know, real time. And it's like, especially with Endgame, I remember like very specific moments that everyone like erupted in and it felt like the closest thing to that I felt with Spider-Man, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially with all the freaking uh, Peter showing up. <laughs> when the yeah. Peter showed up, when, um, when uh, Matt Murdock showed up, when um, it was just like, so good it was just such a intelligently done movie for payoff purposes i don't think it i think it did a good job of setting up still too as a marvel movie should but it was like mostly payoff which as a fan i love yeah okay lovely now liz to you um first of all backtrack a little bit because i what i i will i want to know your spider-man experience and then also how you took in this movie okay none um i don't <laughs> none none you didn't see anything no i i don't know i mean i know the cultural touch points of like there was that upside down kiss with Kirsten i was gonna Dunn's, literally that's what i was gonna say yes and i remember andrew garfield being like on S. was emma stone in or they were just mm-hmm. dating at the mm-hmm. time <laughs> Oh, they did both. They dated and started a movie together. Wow. Okay. Every Spider-Man has dated their, like the actors have dated their, the, the oh. two actors have dated. Oh, great. Wow. Oh. Toby and Kirsten and dated. Toby and Kirsten dated. Um, Andrew and Emma dated. And um, now our current MJ and Spider-Man are dating. Okay. 
Zendaya. Zendaya and who, what is his name? Tom Holland. Okay. I like them. Instagram handle Tom Holland, 2013. <laughs> you want to check him out? Oh, okay. I'm going to write that down. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, no Spider-Man experience. Um, no mm-hmm. Spider-Man experience, but, uh, I, I saw it last night. That's how I took in the movie. I thought <laughs> I could I love it. Just stream it. You know what I mean? So like yesterday I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm home. It was like starting to like mildly drizzle. I was like, not a problem. Like this is when I'm going to watch the movie. You can't do that right now. It is a very popular, expensive movie that you cannot get. So you have to make sure it's playing in theaters and thank God it still was. So I went to a 620 screening at the Americana, which is in Glendale. 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 <laughs> is, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's the right Americana, Americana brand. It was designed by the person who made the Grove, I believe. Great yeah. mall. Great. I mall. love the Americana. So it was like a no, real treat. We, I love we just to prove that we live in LA. <laughs> I love, I love the Americana. I love the Americana. I live here. I live here. Yeah. Oh, the 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 Amazon four star. Actually, I don't like it. I'm public saying I don't like Amazon. So actually, I hate that store. <laughs> that was yes. what I'm I did buy like a self help book sponsor. from that little Amazon that store though, because I was like, this is, this is good. I get mm-hmm. I get white elephant gifts there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I received white elephant gifts. There you go. I guess <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. so Liz, what did you like about the movie, or did you like? Yeah, the movie? Did you I liked. Like the movie? I liked it so much more than I thought I was going to. I have okay. seen a few. I like. I'm trying not to be callous because I know it's something you two love, but like, I don't know. I don't know that I've liked any superhero movie that I've ever watched. I don't understand them. I don't understand the pacing. I don't understand the build. I don't understand who anyone is. Um, Batman was also playing last night. Is that part of this? I don't. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother that's, a, that's like a whole nother podcast oh, that's, okay. I, I think it's being made yeah. um, but I was entertained and I was laughing and it was I thought it was a wrong <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> I like I, I enjoyed agree. myself it was a, it was it a bit long yeah was it a bit long of course it was but yeah, yes and I didn't know where we were going but I was laughing and I enjoyed myself and I really liked yeah. Okay. So I mean, that's yeah. a testament to this movie too, though, right? Because it's like none of the characters are new. They were all like brought back characters. Like we weren't meeting anyone yeah. new. Steve, who were you saying that you got to see again? You were like all the Peters, all the Spider Mans, but then also someone else. What was I saying? I, you did say something. Like a surprise. <laughs> oh, Matt Murdock from and Daredevil. Who's that? Who's that? He was the he was the blind lawyer at the beginning who like caught a rock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's a so blind he's from, lawyer. Okay. Yeah. So, so he's from he, a show, Daredevil. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And Marissa Tomei is not a superhero. No. Okay. You you could tell how she, you know, died. Um but she <gasps> spoiler. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, also, yeah. we're gonna spoil the movies. I don't I I I guess I need to say it. We're going to spoil movies on this podcast. Um, This will, I think, let's see how this goes with like getting into um, a discussion of movies. So starting with Liz, what are some like lingering questions you have? Like things that you've never, (laughs) any, what would you say your two biggest ones were? Okay. Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm. Oh, we're going to get to her. Keeping all the people in the jail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is Benedict Cumberbatch's name? Uh, so that is uh, Doctor Stephen Strange. Okay, um, okay. That was actually like his, a big question yeah. for me. I was like, yeah. he seems important, and what is his name? Oh yeah, um, it's it's funny because that's actually his real name. So like, he's the one superhero that doesn't change his name because he was born Stephen Strange, and Doctor Strange just works. Okay. Uh, but he he is a wizard, okay. as you could tell from all the magic, and you just have to okay. accept okay. that he does magic, and that's the best way to enjoy him. Okay, who is Doctor Strange? Love? What is that cultural reference that I don't know? <laughs> that's an old movie. Okay, <laughs> that. Stanley Kubrick, I believe, okay. directed. And they're not, one is not a play on the other? Absolutely not. Well, actually, now that I say it, maybe. Okay. 
So that's Dr. Strange. That's one question. Because at, okay. at first I thought you were like trying to ask me who his love interest was. Like, I, know, I was Dr. like Strange Rachel McAdams. <laughs> yeah, I was like Rachel McAdams. Yeah. <laughs> From Notebook fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> no lie so far. <laughs> Um, like I have so many questions. Um, oh, oh my gosh. I'm going to kill myself or not kill myself, but like get mad at myself. No, don't do that. Okay. (laughs) All right. Um, uh, Marissa. Oh God. I have so many questions. Like, what do I want to use this question on? How, how about this? Okay. How about we go into, okay. cause I have little bullet points. I would love to like talk through. And if okay. you have a question, um, okay. it might jog your memory. Cause okay. we're going to talk about Marissa Tomei. Don't worry. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not being so, very funny. I genuinely like the movie and I want to know more. You're being I think fun. you're funnier than you think. You're being fun. Listen, Thank the Reykjavik you. students need you to be there. <laughs> they need you to be there to help with the summer intensives. Which summer oh they lost a week and a half, but you know, <laughs> Steve, is this also a job interview? <laughs> <laughs> We're all in that pool in Reykjavik. What is that uh, thing? Yeah, the, the blue the lagoon. springs or something. The yeah. blue lagoon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing zip zabs. We're doing multi game in there. But like red ball. I I cannot you steer yes. this away from improv faster, please. Okay. <laughs> so uh, sorry about no way home. Um, I should have done this at the top. I'm so sorry. But uh, we're gonna read the plot synopsis from RottenTomatoes.com. This might answer some of my questions. The plot synopsis. Oh, <laughs> Uh, so the plot synopsis from Ron Tomatoes reads as this. For the first time in the cinematic history of Spider-Man, our friendly neighborhood hero's identity is revealed, bringing his superhero responsibilities into conflict with his normal life, putting those he cares about most at risk. When he enlists Doctor Strange's help to restore his secret, the spell tears a hole in their world, releasing the most powerful villains who've ever fought a Spider-Man in any universe. Now Peter will have to overcome his greatest challenge yet, which will not only forever alter his own future, but the future of the multiverse. La, 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 la. I mean, that's great. The main thing I really want to talk about the three Peters, the three Spider Men. What the f- I, I had a blast. I, I had a blast. It's so cute. So cute. Two of them are British, which yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Never mind. I won't ask questions. I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch is also. Yes, British. that's what I was uh, thinking. Um, and no, so was Loki, I, the actor that plays Loki, um, Tom Hiddleston. Oh, yeah. Hiddleston. Mm hmm. So Liz, what were you going to say? Just that I love, yeah, like it was something that I didn't understand what was happening, but I like, you know, when people are enjoying themselves and having fun, I was having mm-hmm. fun with them. I thought Andrew Garfield was a delight. I was laughing. I was really, really laughing. And collective I like effervescence. Collective effervescence. And um, mm-hmm. our team name. And also I inferred when Andrew Garfield, spoiler, saves Zendaya, that maybe he mm-hmm. couldn't have saved his Zendaya in his universe, and that's why he was tearing up. Correct, wow. and that was Emma Stone. She died in um, no. those movies. She hits her, yeah. she like hits her head, and he can't catch her in time. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. She's like yeah. falling, literally the same way Zendaya fell, and it was like, ugh, it was. That's what? my favorite movie in the entire film. That like that moment oh, really? was. That was like, oh, uh, uh, that uh, uh, bad movie. Great moment. Oh, I meant this movie. Oh, oh, this. Mo- Sorry, oh, I, I don't see Emma Stone when, die. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I want to say no. No, she's she's one of us. What's she's the, one wait, of us. Why would you have a superhero boyfriend if he can't save you when you're falling? Like, why? Well, she didn't know that until it was too late. Oh. And then she got zapped into La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the same I character. Think. That was the trajectory. So she died, and she was reincarnated into um, an aspiring actress. Mm. Uh, the dream. Um, but yeah, I love those three Peters. I loved. Um, I mean, my favorite moment for me, that my favorite moment was when they called out um, the continuity era, era of like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man could like shoot his webs just from his body. And the other two were like have cartridges, which is what the comic books, you know, originally had was that cartridges. So like that whole conversation of like, does it come out everywhere? <laughs> like, do you get blocked? Blocked. And, um, uh, how about you, Steve? Three Peters, any thoughts? Loved, loved. I mean, I've always loved, uh, I, I, uh, grew up with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, not Toby. I didn't grow up watching Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. <laughs> You're young. You're I'm young, young. I'm young. I'm young. 2008 was a big year for me in Spider-Man. The amazing Spider-Man. So I grew up, so I really like, like, I love, I know, I, I recognize that I'm like that Mary Jane is the, 
like original love interest for Spider-Man, who's Kirsten Dunst plays her. But I loved Emma Stone and and Drew Garfield as like Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man. I understand people's issues with the movies, but that those movies are still great and i thought um it was really great to see andrew garfield again and he's so funny he's so funny he's so funny what a great year he's having oh my god i'm um, a, a tammy <laughs> Faye. uh I, said, I almost said boom boom clap but it's tick tick boom <laughs> <laughs> zip zip zoom <laughs> zip zip boom, zoom clap. and <laughs> Yeah, Charlie yeah, and yeah, Jason and Larson. Yeah, Boom he, um, Chicago. Have you seen? Oh, yeah. Boom <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> boom Boom Chicago. You ever heard of it? Tick Tick Boom Chicago. Wait, that's actually a pretty good show name. If, if, that's if fun. Tick Tick Boom tick, Chicago. Tick Tick Boom Chicago. They um. Uh, did you have you seen? Has anyone here everyone seen? Real quick, has everyone here seen Tick Tick Boom? Yes. Yes. I, I don't. I haven't stopped watching it. There's a someone put. Um. There's a clip from the old Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone and it's them arguing on a bridge while they're walking and someone overlaid therapy from Tick Tick Boom on top of it and it looks like they're singing it because it's like <laughs> I feel badly I'm not <laughs> you. Yeah. I feel bad about you feeling yeah. bad about like that one? Okay. Can I what say Vanessa Hudgens showed up in that film, I will say. Can we say it? Can we say? Can, can we I say, say it? it here? Can we say? So I'm saying like, she's been showing up. So if you oh, stay showing up, you don't have to get showing get up. Ready. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Up. <laughs> Steve loves. Steve loves the Princess Switch movies. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved her since High School Musical. I loved her when she says that coronavirus is a hoax and she still needs to go to Coachella. I've always Love loved her. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a perfect transit. So since speaking of villains. Let's talk about these villains <laughs> in the movie of Spider. <laughs> she was speaking her truth. We had we had a lot of villains in oh, the Spider-Man movie. Okay. We did. Uh, that, that's fine. And are they that's all? Are they all? Okay. Baseline mm-hmm. question. There's been Love three it. Spider-Mans. Tobey Maguire, that movie. Andrew Garfield, that movie. This movie. Well. So it's more like Tobey Maguire, three movies, oh. Andrew Garfield, two movies, Tom Holland. How many is he at? Like, it's weird with Tom Got Holland because he appears, he's in the Avengers movies as well. Oh. So he, but this is his third solo Spider-Man adventure. I see. And all of the villains, are they all the same throughout all of those three eras? So uh, they, so basically uh, the villains come in, um, once they, they only each of those villains you saw were only in one movie respectively I see. um let's see dr octopus uh the guy with the tentacles mm-hmm. and then the green goblin you know um what i want to say william h Willem macy defoe. that's not his name willem defoe thank you um and S- <laughs> sandman was that thomas hayden Tol- church i believe so oh my yeah. gosh i love him and the, so those three were all from spider-man's two, one, and three, respectively, because I said them out of order. It's Green Goblin was in one, Doc Ock in two, Sandman was in three, and then the lizard was in the first Andrew Garfield movie, and then Jamie Foxx's Electro was in the second one. And this is the one thing I was like, I wish they had brought back some of Tom Holland's villains, like Michael Keaton's Vulture, or even, even Jake Gyllenhaal coming back as Mysterio, just to like give him some stake and some skin in the game and also to round out to the number six for all my comic book nerds out there. If you want to listen, you know, the sinister six, that was a Steve, do you know what I'm talking about? Sinister six. Uh, uh, yes. Hello. If you show up, you don't have to stay ready. Up, up. If you show up, you don't have to stay showing up. If you, okay. if you, if you get there in early, films, then you're there. Okay. Fast pass. I Disneyland. <laughs> I think this phrase would work if there was like somebody lying on the ground and they're like, if you show up, you don't need to get up. There you go. Uh, that's Love me that. right now. You can't see it. <laughs> Listeners, you can't see it. Reykjavik people, you can't see, but I'm lying down right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she fell. Uh, well, you know but, what, though, uh, to that point, though, about Michael Keaton yeah. and Mysterio is that neither mm-hmm. of their, none of Tom Holland's villains are people who are like, have like something like physically wrong, not wrong, but you know what I mean? Like they're not like they're, they're motivated by their villains are motivated by like money or like, um, wow. like cause all the, the other hot. villains, the point is that they're trying to, 
help them with like something that went wrong in their life. And now they, they have to be a villain out of reacting to that. Right. Like Green Goblin has that, like right. the, the green thing inside of him that makes him like switch into that. Doc Ock has like the, it's the things that are controlling him. All the other ones mm-hmm. have like very visible um, defects. So I don't know. I think the whole, I think like, I, I agree. I, just, I think his villains though, like what, what would he be fixing with them? Like greed. That, you're right. Cause yeah, these other villains, which this will transition us into the last thing I want to talk about, uh, which is Aunt May, but like these villains did have, you know, they were this classic comic book, like, Oh, I fell into a vat of eels. Oh no. I, this malfunctioning thing happened. So, um, they were able to be reformed, but yeah, Vulture and Mysterio were much more like human money driven people who like, you couldn't just throw a chemical solution on them and heal them. Yeah. That makes sense. But, uh, so talking about the reform of these villains, uh, but specifically Miss Marissa Tomei. Uh, uh, hero. Uh, hero. 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 Truly. That truly. Oscar that she deserved. Mm-hmm. We always question it, but she deserved it. I don't question it. Who's questioning? Yeah, you're using, we're using a lot of we statements, but we should be using I statements. I owe statements. I love, I love Damien. <laughs> I owe uh, you. I owe Ricky. <laughs> <Michael. laughs> I love you, Reykjavik. I love you. <laughs> it's like, are we actually going to Reykjavik to teach improv? Is that what we yes. decided? Is that happening? Yes. All I've heard is how much they love us Bad. coming there and they mm-hmm. want more of us and it's just helps them so much. So. They're like, we hear Tick Tick Boom Chicago is coming over from... We <laughs> <laughs> Tick Tick Boom Chicago. <laughs> and then we get sued both by Tick Tick Boom and Boom Chicago. <laughs> yep. Good. Bring it on. Oops. We have Reykjavik protection, but... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, what what are we? Uh, let's go to the list first. Uh, Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. Uh, what did that do for you? Loved her. Is she was she in other Tom Holland Spider Man movies? Okay, everyone loved her. Now her boyfriend. What was happening there? So <laughs> and who's and like, who's Mysterio? <laughs> or I'll Mysterio answer is- the first one. Okay, so her boyfriend is this guy named Happy. So Happy. That's so that's John Favreau, yes. the actor slash director. Yes. So he was originally the bodyguard of Robert Downey Jr.'s character Iron Man before okay. he became Iron Man. That was his bodyguard, and so um, Iron Man was very influential for this Spider Man. He gave him his first suit and everything, but then Iron Man died in the last Avengers movie. So Happy is just kind of like trying to find new purpose in life. And he thought that's why he went all in on Marissa Tomei. I feel because he was like, well, Iron Man's dead. So I need something else to fix it on. So it's, it's you. <laughs> so I, I love the first scene of with them as a breakup. It's so funny. Yeah. And I laughed, like I laughed a lot with Zend. I really liked like the first like 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. I was like, I am in this movie. Like I'm excited. And then I got lost for like 45 minutes, but then I got back in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought we were going to be following the, Benedict. I don't know what I thought. Um, no, mm-hmm. loved Marissa Tomei. She looked great. I thought her and John Favreau on screen were having a good time and you could see it. I feel like, um, oh, yeah. yeah, I thought she was a good mom figure, I guess, to Spider-Man. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I, I love her. I love Marissa Tomei. Um, didn't know she was in these movies. I was happy to see her. Oh yeah. You'll there. There's always like very prestigious actors in these seemingly silly movies. Um, Steve question for you. How did you feel about them giving Marissa Tomei the with great power comes great responsibility line? Oh, when she started sh- saying that and she was shaking, I was like, <laughs> I remember in the beginning of the theater, like, no, no, because, um, this is, is that you, something that, they say every mo- movie or. Yeah. So the, okay. the thing about these Spider-Man movies that have been kind of, that I really like is that most Spider-Mans start off with like the origin story of Spider-Man and mm. show us like, and they show uncle. So he ta- uh, ta- uh, not Tom, um, Spider-Man, Peter, Peter, Parker. Peter lives with his uncle Ben and aunt May. And usually uncle, the impetus for him, you know, going into crime fighting is that he sees uncle Ben dying. He can't do anything about it. And so, and then he also gets bit by a radioactive spider and becomes Spider-Man and then becomes like, that's like his, motivation mm. for mm. being like a crime fighting uh, vigilante or whatever and which this, oh oh yeah uh, okay which is which is a scene you always see uncle ben die in the toby mcguire movie and the andrew garfield movie yes okay. and, and, and then usually they, uncle ben says with great power comes great responsibility but in this spider-man they don't show us the origin story it just like picks up with him already having done 
been Spider-Man for a little bit, which is, I, I loved. And he only, and it shows that Uncle Ben had already died probably, right? So, because it does, we never meet Uncle Ben in this universe. So the fact that they gave her, he gave her the line to say that, and then uh. she dies right afterwards, like felt, it's like something that we, we'd never seen before in Aunt May Dying, but we've seen the format of his this person that he is his guardian dies mm. saying with great power comes great responsibility and I don't, it felt like it felt right but it felt like it, it was the first time i think i've cried at a like a marvel scene like i've never cheered up or cried same remotely in a marvel movie Sweet. and then when that happened i was like God, it's just like this character can't get a break. This character, this Peter Parker can't get a break right wherever, universe, whatever universe he is in. <laughs> it sucks. And, and that, that's why I love that scene that, you know, it led to that scene where, if, um, you know, all the Spider-Mans were comparing their own, their losses of like, you know, I lost my Aunt May, I lost Gwen, I lost my Uncle Ben. <clears throat> and it's like, it's, I think that's why people always connect to Spider-Man is just because he always understands his humanity and his humanness. Um, and he's never above, like, he's not Superman where he's invulnerable. Like he, he can get hurt, but he can also be emotionally hurt. And I think, I don't know. That's why I'm always drawn to it. Like, yeah, just be happy. That's why like, I think these movies, I like, sorry, real quickly is like the, I, I like that they are, they tackling like real world things. And it's an interesting perspective on like, I think the Marvel movies up to infinity war are talking about how people with like deep trauma, like, are can are still um altruistic and whatnot and then i like that after endgame it's a pretty big analysis on what how people react with grief it's like a big look on like how these characters deal with grief what grief makes people do one division obviously is like a big thing that like turn people on but they're all shows about like processing grief which i don't know i think is like pretty a universal feeling and pretty amazing so i think like this movie is another thing of that. Like I love the conversation they had about grief and living with it and processing it. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of processing and grief, we need to take a break so we can oh process God. our grief. So, <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, <laughs> but we'll be back and we'll be talking all about our, your and my favorite doctor, Dr. Strange, even when, and I'm going to make a pretty big Dr. Strange, Dr. Who comparison. And I hope people get what I'm saying. So, uh, Podcast 616 will be right back after this break. Hello, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of the Producing While Asian podcast. Join us to listen in on conversations with everyone who identify from producers to non-producers who all are part of the AAPI community. There's all that and more on the Producing While Asian podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of a Phenomwell CBD store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, phenom, well, CBD.com. Tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plan can make a difference for people's health and well being from the Press Play Podcast Network. And we're back. Um, <laughs> that's my new. That's my new thing. Uh, <laughs> this is why. This is why Liz and I are the tick ticks, and you're the boom. <laughs> and you. And you know what? And honestly, Steve, I do not dispute that. Um, I am the boom, and this boom is gonna talk about my, my boom, Doctor Strange. Um, 
Uh, this man. So like I said, at the, at the top, this, these podcasts are all leading towards Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness, um, which is going to be the next movie coming out May 6th, uh, which is the second Dr. Strange movie. So uh, th- this movie did a lot for me and Dr. Strange. I didn't really care for him, but it wasn't until this movie that I was like, okay, he's kind of interesting. He's got some layers. He's not just this, you know, brilliant jerk who like became a brilliant wizard. Uh, <laughs> um, but um what 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 do we feel about Doctor Strange? Did, did we respond to him? Did we like to see him? I was a bit confused by Doctor Strange. I'll say it. I naturally. yes. I bet, um, no, you, no, yeah. <laughs> no. It is natural. I was confused at ninety percent of the movie, except for when all the mm, no, like sixty percent. But Doctor Strange. Okay, so he was casting us. Okay, this is I think where I got a little confused. So we have superheroes, but then we also have a wizard. We also have someone who's casting spells and I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. Um, I guess I liked his cloak. That's one thing I can comment nicely about. And I liked how he was able to put his spell in like a little box or a little cube or whatever that thing was. And then Mm -hmm. the friend was wearing it as a ring. Is that what happened? Or those are two different things. Two different things. Okay. Um, I found him. Yeah, I, I wasn't super drawn to him. Oh yeah, and that's I mean, <laughs> what I have to say. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the first time I saw Doctor Strange, same feelings. So I totally is he I tall? Is he supposed to be like taller than the average human, or was that just something? Okay, I think Tom Holland is just really, really short. My apologies, Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> he, he won't listen. Um, but uh, Doctor Strange, Steve, what did Doctor Strange do for you in this movie? I, I've always kind of liked Doctor Strange. I, I find him to be, um, he's an interesting character because he now has to deal with the multiverse because he was texting and driving. That's his origin story. It's that he was texting and driving and got Wait, into what? a car accident. His origin story is that he got into a car accident because he was texting and driving and then like lost... Um, like lost function of his hand. Like he can't, his hands were shaking too much and he's a surgeon. So he like, he's a surgeon. He couldn't be a surgeon Mm -hmm. anymore. He's like actually a doctor and he couldn't be a surgeon anymore. And then he read, heard about this guy who had like a really bad accident and was able to gain con like, um, like mobility or use of his spine again. And so he, figured out that where that guy went to and he went to this place Comertage is that the name of it and in um nepal i think and he went to yeah. do uh and then like a a, a, a white t- tilda swinton lives in this mountain in asia and <laughs> different than the black tilda swinton <laughs> <laughs> different from the asian tilda swinton i want an asian i want an asian tilda swinton yeah <laughs> And we all know are, Asian children. When are we going to see is, it? When are yeah, we going to see Asian it? is just Sandra. Are we going to be brave? <laughs> it's so, 2022. <laughs> so uh, she's there and then teaches him like mystic powers to gain control of like the, the his hands from before basically. But um, I've always kind of liked Dr. Strange because he's like mm-hmm. kind of, I mean, he's, he's, um, he's one of the few Marvel heroes we have that like is um like a non-believer before he, like responsibility mm. is thrust upon him and mm. he's and his motivations for do initially doing it are selfish which i love <laughs> yeah um, I love that it's so like okay, so it's like a PSA for texting and driving, or that's just yeah. I mean, and it's a, and it's a, Tilda Swinton, and it's a PSA for white Tilda Swinton. <laughs> yeah, I can't, man. I love that every one of these podcasts I'm going to record, we're going to touch on Doctor Strange, and I I can't wait to hear all everyone's hot takes on white Tilda. Uh, <laughs> now that I know is, his backstory, I like him more. I like that. Okay, now I understand what's happening. And and he's very um I mean he's one of the strongest Avengers. That's the other thing that like he's like the Avengers have different strengths. Or very oh, yeah. like one is like yeah. above. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean some like, of them are useless. Who's the big I mean, some of, who's the strongest? I would say Wanda. Wanda. Wanda's the strongest. <gasps> I love Wanda. Well, mm-hmm. Wanda's the, two the strongest. I've seen. <laughs> um and then I would say Wanda and Thor are and the Hulk. <laughs> I think Which the Hulk. Mug, I, I think Doctor Strange. 
I mean, he's really strong. You know, my one issue with um with Say Spider-Man it. No Way Home though, with Doctor Strange specifically, Please. was when mm-hmm. he was when they were doing that fighting scene, and then um Spider-Man like, was like, wait. This is Archimedes Spiral. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to figure out how to tie him up using you know what's cooler than magic? Geometry. I was like yeah. the thing that he was saying out loud, I was like that's not how you would calculate Archimedes Spiral. <laughs> well, that's Mar- Marvel's like really put their uh their stake in the ground where of like to try and make us like be cool with magic is like, it's just math. It's just a different way of thinking about math. Like <laughs> if you just mm. like but they have skip intention some and put steps. You, yeah. Okay. Got it. Accor- according to Marvel, if I just hit the right pressure points in the air around me, it'll create um, a magic circle like Dr. Strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you just, if That's you just uh, touch someone's shoulders <laughs> and then their belly button, their, their spirit will leave their body. Like <laughs> it's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole thing. Uh, well, I'm just gonna run through some things that Doctor Strange that, I, that we didn't know, like I, that part that you're talking about, Steve. I didn't. That was so cool because we've seen that before. Tilda did that to Bruce Banner, the Hulk, to exit someone's soul from their body. But this was interesting when he did it to Spider Man. That Spider Man, because he has the Spidey sense, could like still, you know, move his body even though his soul wasn't connected. So that was cool. We learned that geometry, uh, sorry, geometry, geometry can defeat the mirror dimension pretty fun and uh there's also that yeah uh wong uh dr strange psychic is now the sorcerer supreme we don't need to get into that but just want to say that i noticed it also i loved um when the his house was covered in snow does he have interns that were cleaning it up i thought that (laughs) house was a museum and people were visiting it but then it's, does, it sounds like it was his house. Okay, thanks for that. They seemed like mm-hmm. like NYU students trying to get credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they go to Tish. Yeah, uh, they were like, oh, I'll, I'll, get my, I'll get my equity card by doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't pay, but there's credit. <laughs> there's, there's equity points uh, here. <laughs> and just before we get to wrap things up, I just want to talk about the last moment of this movie, which just ties into Doctor Strange. So in order to like, stop the chaos peter makes a deal with dr strange to cast a spell to wipe the memory his memory from everyone's mind so no one remembers mm. who peter is which uh specifically rem- reminded me of the season four finale of doctor who uh donna noble who traveled with the doctor became a part doctor herself and she had too much information in her brain so the doctor had to wipe her memory which was horrifying <laughs> she was like a boring temp agent oh, no. and then she finally traveled the universe and she had to forget it all mm. but uh Memory wipes are pretty uh, sadly common in sci-fi things. Um, but so this memory wipe, what did it do for you guys? Um, like the way it ended with like no one remembering who Peter is. So sad. So sad. I was so sad. sad. I, he just doesn't deserve it. He just lost his like guardian and now he lost his only support network. And I'm like, this mm-hmm. poor white Tom Holland is... <laughs> 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 this, got <it>. poor, <laughs> this poor kid I, it just felt bad that it's just, poor okay. white spider-man that poor <laughs> white spider-man you know what okay wait second issue i really really quickly had with uh, when they got their letters for mit and they were opening it in person i was like no yeah. one I, I you know like i young as someone as someone that does college, college admissions stuff, like i i think no and one's you. getting it in letters anywhere you get an email about it and then the letter comes like three weeks later so that means that you're just sitting on the email especially mit i know how mit's admission cycle works and it's not it's over email and and also i want to uh, i want to co-sign with that and also debunk this theory like when you get into a college and it comes in the mail if you get a thin envelope you didn't get in if you're in you get a full packet like letter sized envelope with a picture of the college on it. It's like, I wonder if I got in. Yeah, that's not I was like, what are you talking about with this letter thing? Uh, it was weird. I mean I understand why they had to do that because it's more dramatic than like logging into a portal together, but not that I think anyway. I think we should still be sending out letters for college admissions. I think mail is fun and mail I think fun. it ups the drama. And <laughs> I don't, I don't know that I need to see another video of people huddled around a computer. You know what I mean? I'm happy for oh, I them. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see any of it. <laughs> anyway, I don't even want to see a letter. I, if you got in, that's amazing. Fit for you. <laughs> I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of drama, we're going to head into our final segment of this podcast. It's the segment we do every episode oh, as Damon, far as I'm concerned. I just yes. want to say I was also sad. 
But that's all that I had. I was sad at the donut shop. Especially okay. because Zendaya and oh. um, Ned, they weren't even friends Ned. either. And I was like, how mm-hmm. far is this memory thing going to go? And do they, they were still kind of close. Really? I think they were friendly. They were, friend. they okay. were, they were, yeah. they seemed like they were friends, but I'm sure they were not as close as Tom or Peter, white Peter was to either of them. May I ask also, there was a close up of like a dollar bill or something. And I like, didn't know why in that scene. He like put money back in his pocket and there was a close up and I was like, is there significance here? I'm missing. Maybe I not. forget. I feel I think that she, that was did, just him. Maybe it's something done. Wait, I'm, I can't I'm remember to, that uh, moment now. Not I'm it's, I, I didn't know I, did, what was important did, did, and what did, did wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like that might have just been a like a, a exposition yeah. job. But there was that guy in the back that was supposed to look like Stan Lee. Oh, there was like a who had the comic books books and he famously has like a cameo in every movie he was in when he was alive. So he always always had like some like one liner here and there. And he's like a a really old guy. So um, but they um, the the guy in the back, I think, was supposed to look like Stan Lee, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. We got to We got to go to the last segment. And that it's it's everyone's favorite segment. It's the classic uh, uh, fuck, marry, kill, where we take three characters from the movies and we decide, would we fuck them, marry them or kill them? And with Spider-Man No Way Home, I feel like we'd be missing an opportunity not to put the three Spider-Men up there of a fuck, Mary kill. Fun, of Toby, fun, Andrew, fun, and Tom fun, fun, fun. <laughs> now I have thought about this a lot, so I could do, I could go first. Please go first. Please go first. Time. Okay. It's going to be controversial. Um, I'm going to kill Tom Holland. I'm so sorry. <gasps> I'm so, you're going to kill, you're going to kill white Tom Holland. Yes. I, I'll save, oh my I'll save Japanese Tom Holland for later. I, <laughs> as someone who didn't know who this person was 24 hours ago, I am offended. That is nuts. <laughs> You're going to kill him? My passions for the other two are just much more stronger. Okay, sorry. Tom, Tom, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. We'll oh, talk about I wish later. You, would. you know, Tom Holland, come find me. I dare you. <laughs> uh, for my, uh, my fuck pick, it will be Andrew Garfield mm. himself. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Amazing Spider-Man movies, sorry to Steve's childhood, were not my favorite. And I didn't love them, but he did a lot of good work in this movie to make me like, maybe I should go back and watch them. I won't. I still think they're bad. But he's uh, he's a very good Peter Parker. And I think he captures that like angsty, I take photography and like I, I live in the shadows. Like that kind of broody teenage Spider-Man. I think he did it very well. And you know what? Good for one night. And uh, Toby. He'll show you his photos. He'll show you his black and white photos. Like Like, so interesting. You're like, oh my God, like the light in this. Like, how did you develop this? (laughs) Exactly. It's digital. Those are are my moves. And um, Tom McGuire, we just have so much history. I'm going to marry him. I've been watching him since I was a a wee little lad. That's my husband. Mm. Toby McGuire as Spider-Man or Toby McGuire just as like... Oh, as Spider-Man. Okay. I, I thought that was better than to saying oh, okay. I fuck Peter, marry Peter, and <laughs> kill Peter. <laughs> so, you know, oh, we would like know. Us, well, we would know which ones you were talking about. Yeah, if you said oh, it that way. Yeah, yeah, with the right inflection. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to marry Spider-Man. I'm trying to fuck Spider-Man. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know oh, I mean? same, 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 same. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I, um, who would like to go next? Um, I would um okay, I have the, the exact I, I have a very different list than you. I don't think I, I have the same same I one imagine. as any anyone. Um I would um I would kill uh Toby Maguire, Spider Man. Because he has um venom in him sometimes and he's bu- like bully Maguire, he's mean. I don't wanna I don't I don't want him to be mean to me all of a sudden. He needs to he go was mean in one of the movies. He, he could get blocked. <laughs> Exactly. Right? That was part of he it. could get blocked. I was listening to that. I was Look, listening. so so he Blockages. could get blocked. It. I don't want. I don't want performance issues in the bedroom. Was that the joke? Was that the implied joke when they were like, "Does it come out of other places?" Were they talking about? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. Um. So yeah, for me, um, white Toby. No. <laughs> <laughs> White Toby, yeah. <laughs> Toby White McGuire, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would, uh, um, I would, uh, I would fuck White Tom, uh, Spider Man, um, because he's just oh, wow, he's just he's just hot. 
He's hot. He's hot. Mm-hmm. We're born the same year. You know, we're, we're That's just, hot. he's my, he's hot. You guys have so much in common. I was going to say so that. much in common. We're, win- we're both winter babies. <laughs> oh my God. Mm-hmm. We're both winter babies <sighs> of 96. God, that's, <sighs> that's great. Um, that's not bad anymore. <laughs> You were born in 1996. Yeah. I was. Oh, I, I am. I am. That was. Um, I really <laughs> love those Olympics. Atlanta Olympics are great. Atlanta. My parents went to that Olympics. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's a blessed a year magnet. to be um, born. Anyway, the Macarena, mm-hmm. the Macarena yeah. came out um, around the time I was born. Um, and One Sweet Day by Boys to Men and Mariah Carey was just leaving the charts as I was born. <laughs> I think you just have this ready to go. <laughs> well, 96 is a year. Um, and then I would marry white Andrew uh, Spider-Man because um, if you marry someone, you can still fuck them. So I want to marry him and talk to him. Oh yeah. Like that's the thing. Like whoever you're marrying, you're probably going to fuck him all the time. That's the law. I don't know. <laughs> I think you're, I think at a certain point you're going to be making love. And then at a certain point, the spark yeah. is going to fade. Wow. And you know what? Uh, I, welcome uh, I, say, I welcome it. You welcome it. a spark. <laughs> I welcome a spark and I welcome a fade. With with him? I love that. I love You're right. a that. Fade, a fade there. Yeah. Okay. It would be powerful mm-hmm. because he would he would be really would respectful be and amicable. <laughs> he, he would, would go really to therapy amicable. and he would like listen, be yeah. like, listen, I love it. Like, let's talk about it. Let's not, not talk like, about it. He'd be like, I want the the grief that comes from our love to be with me forever. And I want this chapter to always sit with me. I want the and complexity like, oh and the beauty There's that's going to come on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah. And be like, uh, stop talking. Like, this is the problem. Like, you're talking. Like, I don't want to be talking anymore. <laughs> Turning over to uh, Liz, uh, what are your selections? Okay, I'd kill Tobey Maguire and I'd Guys. have Andrew Garfield um, fuck me and I would hmm. marry Tom Holland. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, do we have all have different answers? We all. You both want to kill. Yeah, but we both, both killed. Kill. We're both, we both killing killed Toby. Toby in front of you. <laughs> Honestly, when it comes to Tobey Maguire, it really does. It's really the definition of, I guess he had to be there. <laughs> it really is. Like, if you weren't there, because that's, I went to midnight shows for those Spider-Man I see, movies. I see, I see, I and, and I feel like if you weren't about that life, mm. you're probably not about him ever. Well, I think most people were more, uh, initially, were more excited about Tobey's Spider-Man coming back than Andrew's. Yeah. Like, but more then, people love Tobey's movies. Yes. But I think Andrew... He had a good showing in this movie. Toby was, I don't know what Toby did, but he got stabbed that one time. Uh, and I got scared. Yeah, but he always gets stabbed. He does. I thought Andrew like- wore his cost, his suit the best. I thought he mm. looks great in his suit. And yeah. I was attracted to it. And I was attracted. He was making me laugh. And laughter. He was so funny. So, so funny. funny. And I when think he, was he like would be. Peter three. Yes. Yeah. Peter three. <laughs> Peter three. And he's British. Uh. And he's. Oh, I guess we're talking about the character. Well, I can't yeah. separate it though. There was something that happened for me in Tick Tick Boom, like how he was flailing his body around. I was like, this guy is nuts. And this would be uh. fun. Like, I didn't know mm-hmm. how free he was. And then Tom just seems like a nice person. But also his Spider-Man seems like a nice person. Gosh, it seems like each one of these actors is taking things from their own personalities and infusing them into their portrayal of Spider-Man. And Reykjavik, wow. Reykjavik improvisers, if you're listening, that's good acting. All right. That is clearly the end. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, Steve Hahn, where can people find you on the socials and medias? What, what are you doing in life? Um, right now, <laughs> oh, at the time of this recording, nothing. <laughs> So you can find me on oh Instagram, I guess. Jesus. At Yoko Homo. It's Yoko <laughs> underscore that- underscore homo. <laughs> yes. It's Yoko Homo with two underscores. And um I just did my I just posted my CBS showcase sketch there. So you can look at that, I guess. I'm not doing anything else right now actively. Waiting he plays a pilot. I play a pilot in that. You're right. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I love yeah. being a pilot. 
that's how you're gonna get to Reykjavik. Uh, <laughs> I'm flying. I lose my co-pilot. It's like a party bus, but it's a plane. <laughs> it's a plane with, yeah. imp- with a bunch of Icelandic a- improvisers. Oh, actually, <laughs> why isn't it just a party plane? <laughs> uh, we're yeah, that's where we host. That's where the most of the classes are. Is on the plane. Uh-huh. Yeah. Liz, where can we find you? You can find me at Liz Fitz Memories <laughs> on Instagram. And yeah, um, I have a newsletter you can sign up for. And Ooh. I'm just writing and performing and you'll know about it there. Co-piloting, of course. Thank you. Of course. Um, well, Steve and Liz, thank you guys so much for being on this podcast. It is a dream. I adore each of you and I'm glad this is your first time meeting, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm glad to connect. Um, I'm Dave Brewster. <laughs> I'm your host. Um, this is the podcast 616. You can find me at, you can find me on Instagram at Dayman Royster. I'm on Twitter at Dayman Royster 88. And um, that's yeah. when I was born. 1988. Yes. Girl. We're the same age. Um, so we've been babysitting Steve. Um, you, uh, <laughs> While we're watching the Olympics, please. He's crying in the bedroom and I'm just like, <laughs> the one girl's breaking her ankle. and <laughs> uh, Perry Shrug? Yes. Uh, Scrug. 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 Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're going to Google this. Um, so that is the show. Um, please come back next time. Next week, we'll talk about more Marvel. Oh, I need a sign off. What's a good sign off I should have? Um, adios. Um, to infinity and beyond. You um, are the power. Mm. What's the Marissa Tomei line? Kill, uh, kill Toby Maguire. No, Liz had it. So um, <laughs> until next time, please remember that with great power comes great responsibility. Is this RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars? Oh.